back. In this video, we're talking about circle theorems. Now, circle theorems is basically finding angles inscribed in circles. These angles are most of the time found in shapes. In today's video, we're talking about eight commonly tested theorems about circle. So kindly watch to the end and make some notes as we move along. So let's start with the very first theorem. Rule number one. Now this is what rule number one states. It says the angles a chord or an axis of tens at the circumference in the same segment of a circle are equal. Now over here, look at this picture. Angle A and angle B arise from the same chord over here. As you can see down below, the red chord down there. And also the same arc indicated by the red sign over there and they're also in the same segment so we say angle a and angle b are equal that is they follow the, the rule this is not just limited to two angles we can also form or substance other angles at a circumference provided they are in the same segment and from the same chord and from the same segment they become equal so i can form another angle at a circumference over here arising from this same chord like this and name it angle C. I can also do some over here from the same chord and the same arc like this and label it angle D. And because they all follow the same pattern, I can deduce that angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D are equal. Now let's go through a quick question illustrating the rule. The question says that if you find x if sqr is 25 degrees so sqr sqr 25 degrees that is at angle q we put 25 degrees over there like this good looking at the question you realize that sqr and rps arises from the same arc that is s r yeah so following our rule we can say angle sqr is equal to angle rps that is 25 degrees is equal to x and that is the answer for our x so our x becomes 25 degrees so simple and that is it now rule two now what rule number two states is that the angles at the center is twice the angles at the circumference. In this diagram, we have angle A at the circumference and angle B at our center where it has been labeled with O. Now, the, the rule says that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. That is provided they arise from the same arc. So, as you can see, they arise from the same arc over here. So, we see angle B. At the center is twice angle a so a quick example over here we have a diagram inscribed in a circle a c b the question says that find a o b a o b so a o b somewhere here a o b so with the angle at o so if you find a o b if a c b is 65 a c b so the angle at c is 65 degrees now looking at this you realize that O is at the center and C is at the circumference. So to get O, we multiply the angle at C by 2. So we can deduce a nice formula by saying AOB is twice ACB, like this. So multiplying ACB, that is 65 by 2, we end up getting 130. And that is the angle for angle AOP. So simple. So rule number three, this is what rule number three states. It says that the angle the diameter of a circle subtends at the circumference is 90 degrees. Now I'm talking about diameter. The diameter is the longest chord in a circle which passes through the center of the circle. So over here, our diameter is AB. That is, it passes through the center of the circle. And the angle subtended by this diameter AB is at C and it's 90 degrees over here. Watch this carefully. 
This particular rule is an extension or a more modified form of the previous rule just discussed. You realize that the previous rule says that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the edge of the circumference. You know a straight line has an angle of 180 degrees like this. So to get the angle at the edge, per our previous rule, we divide 180 degrees by half and we get 90 degrees over here. And that is why we have this rule. So this rule is an extension of the previous rule. So with this, we can subtend any angle at the circumference provided it's in the semicircle and from diameter AB and we should get 90 degrees at the circumference. So I can form one over here like this and I can still get my 90 degrees like this. So anyway, I do from the same diameter over here like this, I still get 90 degrees. That is a powerful property that we shouldn't forget. So with this, let's go through a quick question over here. The question says that we should find x if bc is a diameter. The question has been made more clear. If bc is a diameter, then the angle at a and this diagram will be 90 degrees per our rule. So the angle at a will be 90 degrees like this. So to find the angle x, we need to sum the angle at a, which is 90 degrees, plus the angle at b, 36 degrees, plus x degrees itself. And you know the sum of angles in the triangle adds up to 180 degrees. So we go to that. 180 degrees. 90 plus 36 gives us 126 plus our x, which yields 180 degrees. So when I subtract 126 degrees from both sides like this, I end up getting our x to be 54 degrees. And that is the value for x. So it's so simple. So with this, we can proceed to the next theory. All right, so rule number four. What rule number four says is that the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral adds up to 180 degrees. A cyclic quadrilateral is basically a four-sided polygon which is inscribed in a circle or whose vertex lies on the circle. So you realize that cyclic is kind of round and quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. So combine the definition, we get that. All right, so looking at this diagram, A over here is opposite to C. So when I add A to C, I must give 180 degrees. So A plus C must yield 180 degrees. The same way B is opposite to D, angle B is opposite to angle D. So angle B plus angle D must also give 180 degrees, so like this. And go B plus D must yield 180 degrees like this. Good. So let's consider a simple question with this rule. So the question goes like this. MNO is equal to 45 degrees. Find MPO. So MNO is 45 degrees. MNO. So the angle at N is 45 degrees like this. We should find angle MPO. MPO. So the angle at P. Quite simple. So we realize that the angle at P is opposite to the angle at N. So the property holds. We have to add the angle at P to the angle at N and equate it to 180 degrees because they are opposite angles in the circular quadrilateral. So we add 45 degrees to the angle at P, that is MPO, and equate it to 180 degrees. So angle MPO will be equal to 180 degrees minus 45 degrees. Hence MPO will be equal to 135 degrees. And that is the answer for the angle at P. That is 135 degrees. And that is it. So simple. So let's dive into rule number five. All right, so rule number five. So rule number five says that two tangents from the same point have the same length. So over here, we have two tangents over here, T1 and T2. Now talk about a tangent. The tangent is basically a line that is drawn to touch a circle at exactly one point. Only one point. And that is what a tangent is. So a tangent is not anything strange. It's just a line that is just drawn to touch a circle at exactly one point. So per our rule, the common point of these two tangents, T1 and T2, is over here. So the point where it touches a circle that is where T1 touches the circle, this part, to the common points. The distance between that point and the 
common point where both tangents are arising from is the same as the point where t2 touches the circle and its common point so the distance between them are equal so if this is 10 centimeters the other is also 10 centimeters and that is this rule all right so rule number six this is what rule number six states it says that a tangent in a radius makes 90 degrees so in this diagram we have this horizontal line to be our tangent and the vertical line over here to be our radius we've already explained the tangent a tangent is basically a line that is drawn to touch one specific point on the circle and a radius is kind of a chord that arises from the center to any point on the circle that's a, the circumference so where the tangent meets the radius specifically and 90 degrees is formed so these are properties you use whenever you encounter a tangent meeting a radius so it's basically simple let's move to the last but one that's rule number seven all right so rule number seven this is what rule number seven states it says that the angle between a chord and a tangent is equal to the angle between the alternate segments so in this diagram over here we have a tangent down here as you can see touching the circle at one point so the angle between this chord that's the angle a between the chord and the tangent over here is equal to the angle in the alternate segment that is b like this the same way the angle d between the chord and the tangent over here like this is equal to the angle in the alternate segment c and that is this property now this property is basically simple but it's kind of complicated so what you need to do is to be abreast with how the diagram looks like to be able to solve questions related to this particular theory so let's try this question it says that find i t a b and i i a t b so let's work with the t a b and this diagram t a b is somewhere here t a b yeah so that is the angle at a that is what we're finding for so per our rule realize that to get the angle at a the angle at a is in the alternate segment so it is equal to the angle between the tangent and the chord here so this is 62 degrees so the angle at a is 62 degrees and that is the answer for atb so 62 degrees the same way to find atb now we have two angles in a triangle so we just sum them up and take them out from 180 and we get the value for atb so that's what we'll do so atb will be 180 minus the sum of 62 plus 54 so we end up getting atb to be 64 degrees and that is the value for atb so so simple so what we just need to do is to be abreast of how the diagram should look like and which angle is in the alternate segment and which angle is between the chord and the tangent getting that you can be able to ease questions of the stuff so let's move to the final rule that is the final theorem in this theorem eight and this video all right so the final rule and this is what the rule states it says that a perpendicular line from the center of a circle bisects the chord so over here we have this to be our perpendicular line and we have a b to be our chord so any time a perpendicular emerge from the center of a circle as you can see o and passes through the chord it bisects it bisecting means it divides into two equal parts that is if this part is x the other part will also be x so it will be equal so if it's 10 that's 10 that way so every time you encounter a question that is a perpendicular emerging from the center of a circle kindly apply this rule